Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. I'm your photography and video making mentor. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to turn this almost white like background into pure RGB white background. That is the technically correct white background. Before I start, just want to say that I actually show you how to even take such a shot in which there are no reflections, no bad looking reflections in my product photography course as you can see in front of you. So do check that out because it covers a lot of different range of products like shooting beverages, uh, shooting things like this and a lot of uh, other things. So do check that out. Link will be in the description. But right now, let's see how to tackle this problem. So we have this layer. We're not going to disturb this. I'm going to duplicate this and everything will be done from here. So the function that will help us to change the background to height very easily will be if you go here now with this layer selected, highlighted, uh, go to image, go to adjustments, go to replace color. Okay, and here all you have to do is remember this background here is pretty much like a dull gray. So first of all, we have to tell Photoshop this automatically this eyedropper will come. We just have to select any color, which is the bad color, which is the bad color, any of this gray. So I can click almost anywhere like this. And what you see here is this preview, like a black and white preview. This just means anything that is white right now is basically selected. That means ultimately when we select the resulting color from here, it'll be replaced, okay? So you can see most of that is selected, but a lot of our bottle is also selected because it is a see-through uh, thing, okay? So that is gonna happen. It can't be completely uh, black, but we are gonna tackle that later on in this tutorial. You can control this fuzziness slider, okay? Just to decrease the amount of the selection or increase it. So I think this is okay. This is fine. As long as the main parts, which we know are not white or dull gray, should not be covered here, okay? So let's say maybe something like this. This is fine. Like definitely at least most of this background should be white. That's what is important. Now here, we can either change this color here to white or you can just simply raise the lightness slider. So if I do that, just see what happens. Okay, you can actually see it on this image also. It basically is turning most of this into absolutely RGB white, okay? So if we do this and if I just hit on, okay, now you must be thinking, Kush, but isn't the bottle looking bad? So we are gonna do something about it, but at least right now, let's just have a look. So you can see at least the background has been turned uh, into something which is white. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a layer mask and we just will be painting black to conceal the areas which we don't want to be affected by this change that we have just done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a layer mask and now I can, Go ahead and take a paintbrush, select black. Remember, black will conceal things, okay? And reveal the uh, layer below. So I can start doing that. But the problem is I'll have to be very careful, right? I'll just have to start painting like this, you can see. So I can definitely go ahead and do it if I'm careful, but the problem is I can just go out of bounds like this. So we won't do that. We'll just quickly, in order to make our job slightly easier and more accurate, make a selection. So what we can do is if I just hide this layer right now and just go back to our original, I can just quickly select this bottle first. So I can go to either I can use a quick selection tool or I can go to select and click on subject, which is gonna do a much more accurate job, especially these days. Newer Photoshop versions do a fantastic job with this, as you can see. Now that we've got the selection, we can open up this layer again, go to our layer mask and then simply start painting like this. Now, even if I go out of bounds, it's not gonna be a problem. So this is easy or I could have just filled it with black also the selection, but that's fine. Okay. So now I can just press Control D or Command D to get rid of the marching ants. If you feel the edges are a bit more defined or very sharp, what you can do with this mask is, make sure this is selected, you can just feather this mask. Let me show you if I just zoom in here, okay? Feathering will just basically feather the edges of the masks, okay? Like you don't want to do this much, that'll just make it too blurred. But let's say we're starting off with this. Maybe just, you can just see a very slight blur on the edges, so just makes it uh, more smooth and more uh, realistic, this whole transition. Apart from that, there might be some issues which you might have to take care of. So let's go from top to bottom. 
most of it looks pretty good, but you can see some issues like this. So if on the right here, so that means we'll just have to basically, I think, just select white and basically reveal, you know, this is from the top layer. We want white to come here, right? So we can just change over to white or just remove this a bit. All right, I think that is pretty good. And yes, now I think this starts to look good. Let's just compare it with the original, yes. And that's how you turn dull gray background or any other background into RGB white. And by the way, what do we exactly mean by RGB white? Let me just quickly show you that also, if in case you are interested. So this was the original image. If I was to go to our palette and just select any color here, you can see it is close to white, but the RGB values are not to the maximum, which are 255, 255, 255. Those, when you mix those three or add those three, rather you get pure white, whereas in in this case, if I was to uh, just close this, the new one, if I was to just take the palette, click anywhere, this is going to give us 20, 255, 255, 255, which will be good to go for any sort of client uh, demands or e-commerce website demands, which only accept technically RGB wide backgrounds for product shots. So I hope that you like this tutorial. Don't forget to check out my product photography for beginners course. The link will be in the description and don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. I'll see you next time. This is Kush Sharma. Bye for now.